Hey everybody, Advocate Lucinda. Listen, I am really excited about the topic today and I don't believe I've ever done a topic on this subject matter, which is suing a federal officer. Specifically, we're going to talk about taking a Bivens action. And if you are an individual who plans to sue a federal officer, for violation of your constitutional rights, such as the Fourth Amendment, which Bivens is a Fourth Amendment case. And if you are an individual who is stalling an employment discrimination claim against your federal employer, this video is for you too. So let's get started. Before we get into what a Bivens action is, there's one thing you need to know. That is that a Bivens action is an individual capacity lawsuit. And what does that mean? The plaintiff can sue the individual official, federal official who violated his or her constitutional rights in his or her individual capacity. In other words, the plaintiff would not sue the entity. A Bivens action permits a plaintiff to seek damages from any person who acting under color of federal law. Now we are talking Fourth Amendment and federal law, some of you have probably already concluded that we are talking about police officers, federal police officers. And we are, but there are other federal officers who fall in this category, such as federal patrol officers, federal prosecutors, federal judges, congressmen and congresswomen. You get my point? As long as when the federal officer committed the violation, he or she was acting under color of federal law. So the federal officer must have deprived the plaintiff of certain rights, privileges, or immunities secured by the Constitution of the United States. So let's look at these rights, privileges, immunities that are secured by the Constitution. The First Amendment, which protects rights to freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of assembly, freedom of petition. The Fourth Amendment, protection against unreasonable search and seizure, protection against the issuing of warrants without probable cause. And of course, these are the protections that Bivens claimed and for which he alleged were violated and the grounds for bringing his lawsuit. The Fifth Amendment, which prohibits federal government from depriving any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. It protects against trial without indictment. It protects against double jeopardy. It protects against self-incrimination and it protects against property seizure. Now let's go back up to the first bubble where the government is prohibited from depriving any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Is that familiar to you? Well, if you think about the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution, its language is similar to the language here, except in the 14th Amendment, it prohibits 
the state government from depriving any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law or local government. You see the difference? There is the Sixth Amendment, which guarantees a right to a speedy trial, a right to be informed of charges, the right to be confronted by witnesses, the right to call witnesses, the right to a legal counsel. The Seventh Amendment, which guarantees right to trial by jury. The Eighth Amendment that protects against excessive bail. It protects against excessive fines and it protects against cruel and unusual punishment. So what am I saying? If a federal official violates any one of the constitutional rights while operating under color of federal law and personally causes injury to the plaintiff, the plaintiff can file a Bivens action. Of course, there are elements and standards that the plaintiff must meet to prove their case. Nevertheless, the plaintiff can file a Bivens action. So let's get into Bivens. Bivens filed a lawsuit after agents of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics entered his apartment and arrested him for narcotics violations without a warrant or probable cause in violation of the Fourth Amendment. Bivens sought money damages from each of the federal agents. And this case can be found at 403 U.S. 388. It's a 1971 case. And I will leave a link where you can download the case and read it. The Supreme Court held that where a federal officer acting under color of federal authority commits a constitutional tort, a cause of action for money damages arises directly under the Constitution. So let me demonstrate how a Bivens violation occurs in an employment context. In Davis versus Passman, the Supreme Court recognized a Bivens claim for violation of the Equal Protection Clause of the Fifth Amendment when a congressman fired the administrative assistance based on her gender. The Equal Protection Clause is part of the Fifth Amendment. I don't believe I mentioned that earlier when we were talking about the Fifth Amendment. As well, the Equal Protection Clause is part of the 14th Amendment. So you see how a federal employer can be sued under Bivens. The court also recognized that federal courts had the power to award equitable relief such as injunctive relief directly under the Constitution. And in a lawsuit for an injunctive relief, the plaintiff is asking the defendant to refrain from doing a certain act. Or the plaintiff is asking that the defendant perform a certain act. So let's get to the elements of a Bivens action. First, the plaintiff must allege a constitutionally protected right is violated. Two, the plaintiff must allege that a federal officer acting under color of title of federal authority violated that right. Three, 
the plaintiff must allege a statutory cause of action is not available or an available statutory cause does not provide a meaningful remedy. The plaintiff must allege an appropriate remedy, namely damages can be imposed. Let's look at some procedural matters. The basis for jurisdiction District courts have jurisdiction over Bivens causes of action under 28 U.S.C. section 1331 because they are civil actions arising under the Constitution. Now, I will be providing you with a link where you can download a Bivens complaint. And you will notice in that complaint that in addition to the complaint citing the jurisdiction, 28 U.S.C. Section 1331, it also cites 28 U.S.C. Section 2201. And this is a declaratory request. So in addition to the plaintiff's Bivens claim, the individual is also asking that the court make some type of declaration concerning the case. And I will leave a link also to that statute for you to read. Regarding the statute of limitations, Bivens actions are subject to the same statute of limitations as claims brought under 42 U.S.C. section 1983, the personal injury statute of limitations of the state. Remember, we're talking about federal, where the constitutional violation occurred. So the Bivens action is the federal version of a 42 U.S.C. 1983, which is the state's version. I want you to really read the material that I provided. It's really interesting and compelling stuff, okay? So I hope this has been helpful to you. And I will see you next time on Advocate Lucinda. Take care.